Hey guys, so today I am going to talk about the pretty interesting issue of Alpha Investments plan. Uh, he has made several videos, including about the buy list, removing Power 9 from the buy list, which would indicate that the Power 9 and obviously reserve list cards are under fire right now. Now there is a dip. Uh, we all know that in the card game, there has been a massive dip since March. March, I think, was the height of when Pokemon, sports cards, and magic cards were the most expensive. And since that time, it's been a dip. Is there going to be a rebound? What is the strategy behind Alpha Investments telling you this video? That Star, I think Star City Games is not buying uh, Power 9, but I'm pretty sure Card Kingdom is. I actually looked at Card Kingdom the other day and they seem pretty strong in their numbers and other vendors are more than happy to buy Power 9 as am I. Let's talk about the reserve list. So in Magic the Gathering, there is a list. So interesting enough, in Pokemon, there is no such thing as a reserve list. For every anniversary, they reprint the Charizard and Charizard has been reprinted in uh, base set two. I'm not even talking about like Charizard the character, I'm talking about that particular Charizard card has been reprinted in base set two. I think it's in legendary collection, uh, you know, as in foil to legendary collection, it's pretty crazy. It has been reprinted obviously recently in evolutions and many people are saying that it will be reprinted soon now for the 25th anniversary. I haven't kept up with Pokemon news, so I don't know. The difference between the Charizard is it's 100% collectability, 0% playability. That Charizard is incredibly weak. If you try to play it, you would lose every single game of Pokemon, even to like a little kid who has a GX Charizard or a, a VMAX Charizard with three times as much HP, doesn't need to evolve, right? And it can do four times the damage for less uh, fire energy. So let's talk about the reserve list in terms of like investment. If only like sports cards were that easy. If only there was like a Kobe Bryant, for instance, and there would never be any more Kobe Bryant's printed again since rest in peace, Black Mamba, he's passed away. That is not what's happening. What's happening is they still reprint Kobe Bryant cards today. Now, of course, you can argue the autograph, the patches, they're becoming more and more difficult because there's no not going to be any more autographs, but there are more special Kobe cards. And when you talk about you know, other games, for the most part, they don't have this mythical reserve list where nothing can be reprinted. Think about Wizard of the Coast right now. They are reprinting, they're reprinting as if their game is not going to exist in like two years from now. That's what they're acting and behaving like. They're, they have secret layers coming out multiple times a month. They have specialty sets. They have um, three different types of booster boxes you can buy now. They have the draft booster box. They have the set booster box. They have the collector's booster box. So they have three different price points you can buy magic cards with the almost, almost the same cards, of course. The reserve list is very special because in most games, there isn't something like the reserve list, and especially in terms of playability. It's special in two aspects. One aspect, it cannot be reprinted. A lot of people talk about that. The second aspect is these cards are actually good. So magic, unlike Pokemon collecting cards, I mean, people collect Pokemon cards. That's why Pokemon cards are valuable. People collect sports cards. That is why it's valuable. Magic is both collectible and has utility. So your Underground C, and the way that I look at this is if you bought Underground C for $200 years ago and you sell it for 400, not only did you double your money, you also got to use it in your ED8 stack for four, five, six, seven years. That is great utility. When you talk about like an ED8 stack, there's a hundred cards. You might think, oh, it's just 1%. No, no, it's one of the for if, if you crack a fetch land, what are you going to go grab? Probably your underground sea. So it's not even just 1% of your deck. It is played far more because it's fetchable. And that's one of the reasons it's so good. Power 9, same concept. 
You know, when someone shows you a Power 9, you know, they're a new player, they're like, wow, that's pretty cool, I've heard of that before. It's kind of a flex, if you will. So it's interesting that Rudy is kind of telling you, oh, things are going poorly, you know, sell me your reserve list cards for pennies on the dollar. And I've already gone over the exact ratio, so, I mean, those are, those are the BGS. So the reason that this is so unique was I actually know those cards cannot are exactly the same that Rudy showed in the video and I was offered with pictures. The guy was so offended when I made the video that then like he tried to sue me <laughs> because Rudy took advantage of him. Rudy paid, I think, 300, 350 for the cards. He won 750, which was probably a reasonable price. Cards today are probably six, eight, maybe $10,000. Um, they weren't at the time, but I mean, they were probably closer to 750 than they were to 300. So essentially, you know, whatever a price somebody wants me to buy at, which is basically a buy list plus 10%, take, divide that by half, divide the buy list by half. And that's what Rudy paid for it. Not what Rudy offered. That's what Rudy paid. And that kind of leads me on to my next thing. So Rudy's model, and we'll explore this model is to sell standard boxes and buy vintage cards. And he said many times, and people have asked him, can you sell me some of your reserve list? And he says, no, it doesn't matter if it's a Black Lotus from Alpha. It doesn't matter if it is a Homeland Norway. He does not sell his reserve list cards. So he's just kind of compiling and compiling and compiling. He's just using the profit that he makes from his Patreons to buy more reserve list cards from his patrons, but he never sells them to his patrons. So it's kind of this very odd system. So if you want to know how strong your reserve list is, look at what Rudy's doing. And I, because sometimes Rudy offers so low that people contact me and saying, Hey, I gave this off to Rudy. Do you want to match? Do you want to beat? Do you want to, what, what, what do you want? Right? Normally they want double the price. So if they out offer the cards for Rudy for $350, they're going to want 750 from me. <laughs> and then once I don't, I say, oh no, that's not a good deal. Then they'll go back to Rudy and sell it to him for Rudy price, which is half a buy list. Um, and at the time, anyway, for these cards, the reason I can say this is they're BGS cards and their serial numbers, they match up to the serial numbers in Rudy's videos. Otherwise, I couldn't say that. Um, these are graded. There was a graded foil Yagamaru's Hollow a PSA 10 or a BGS 10. And there was another BGS 10 or something. It was another foil, I think powder keg or something. But the big one was Yagamaru's Hollow. So as soon as I saw that card, I looked at the serial number. It matched. It was the guy. Obviously, the guy contacted me later to try to sue me. <laughs> I don't know why he was going to sue me. Because that those cards today are worth a lot of money. Now, I don't know exactly how much money they're worth because they're, they're, I think it's a, a one of one I think the Yagamir's Hollow, there's only been one PSA 10. At least at the time, there was only one PSA 10. And we know how hard they grade now, especially a reserve list foil PSA 10 legendary land. Ooh, I mean, that has every, that ticks every box in terms of collectability. PSA 10, tick. Legendary land, tick. Foil, tick, reserve list foil, tick, tick. Um, so you have to look at like what people are doing. And that's what I always look at. I, I do look at what Rudy's doing. And, you know, there is some manipulation. I mean, obviously his channel is big enough that whatever he says, there is some type of manipulation. So if he wants people to sell them, he wants people to sell to him for Power 9, then easily he will make a video saying Power 9 sucks. Or, hey, look at this big store. And I don't forget, it was just Channel Fireball, Star City Games. They're not buying Power 9 anymore. But guess who's going to buy Power 9 for pennies on the dollar? Me, the person producing the video. So it's fascinating, but that's why I don't lose confidence in a reserve list. If Rudy stops buying reserve list cards, that's when you would lose confidence in it. Okay? If he is still buying reserve list cards and showing off his collections, buying more reserve lists, buying more reserve lists, buying more, why would you ever be um, concerned, right? I, I, I have no concern. Whenever I see Rudy make a video about, oh, this thing, bad thing has happened, I know that I'm also going to be able to buy 
So like I said before, one of the biggest buys I've ever made was Duty Rudy. You know, he lowballed some dude. Dude came back to me and said, you know, hey, I'm an eBay seller. You know, the offer was really low. What would you want it? I was like, what is it? Oh, it's, you know, 200 dual lands. I was like, what? <laughs> oh, and I'm local to Houston. I was like, what? <laughs> and, you know, <laughs> Underground sees $200 right now. Okay, let me see this collection. All I had to do was see, I saw at Chase Bank one time. We weren't even supposed to do that deal that day. I was just supposed to look at it. And I just had to, I had to make him an offer. So I made him an offer that I didn't really think was like he would take, but he took it. And I was like, oh, he must have been lowballed into oblivion by Rudy Chan. <laughs> you know? And so I know what is happening right now. I know people are selling Power 9 because I'm getting offers. So whenever Rudy comes out with this video where he's either he's trying to get people to sell to him, mostly vintage, you know, expensive cards, I also kind of get these scraps, if you will. And really, it is scraps. It's people who went to Rudy, didn't like the offer, and then now they go to me. And the only way that it works out is if they're local, then I get like a better deal if they're local, because then you can check if they're fake and stuff. But even online from Chicago, I've shown you deals. Every time Rudy makes a video saying the reserve list sucks or the cards on the reserve list sucks, even he gets the opportunity to buy more and I get the scraps. And I'm sure I'm not the only one because I pay more than him. I pay more than any store right now. Hi <laughs> guys.